Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. What a beautiful day. With so much happening in the world, we could decide to be either absolutely petrified or absolutely encouraged that we are the generation. When Jesus said, I come soon, I come quickly, he really meant it. These birth pains, they are speeding up. Now the word in Greek was taku or takiu. I can't talk those languages, but it's the word we got tachometer from, you know, in the car where it tells you how fast your motor's going sort of thing. This is what he said. It's going to come like that. He is coming like that. These birth pains are coming like that and it's happening. The news on the world constantly, constantly, constantly wars, rumours of wars, evil being presented as good, good being presented as evil, earthquakes. I get reports on my apps, earthquakes now not eight a day, but eight an hour. I used to get daily updates. Now they're Every time my phone turns over, there's more earthquakes, more volcanoes. The earth is being shaken, my darlings. He is shaking it. We are so close that soon that last shake will come and the graves will open. And those we love will rise. He is shaking the earth. And he said he would before he comes for us. So thumbs up, get ready. Bags packed, get ready to pick them up as we go out that door and remember the only thing we can carry in our bag is our faith in the Lord. Praise God. Now, some of us may be getting distressed about being shut out. My last video was about that very thing where people are turning against us. Jesus said this would happen. But he gave us a plan of action, if you remember. He said to his disciples when they went, he sent them out in twos and he said, if the house or the town receives you, enter in, fellowship with them and leave them with your peace. But he said, if you enter in and you, you are not received, what are you to do? You are to leave. You are to wipe off the dirt from your feet and go on and take your peace back with you. It's up to them to accept or reject. You are not guilty if you walk out and dust your feet off. You are not guilty of anything if you have given the word then the Holy Spirit works with the word. If that person will not receive the Holy Spirit, refuses the Holy Spirit. Because anyone, remember, anyone that hears the word, the Holy Spirit then convicts them. If they reject the conviction, they are rejecting the Holy Spirit. You have done all that God asked you to do. We were meant to Give the word to tell the gospel. It's up to the heart of the receiver to either receive or reject. We are not held accountable for their decisions. Now, we were also told, and this sounds a little bit harsh. I know because when I've said it to somebody, they thought that sounded terrible. But... We were told, do not cast your pearls before swine. Swine are things that will trample anything into the dirt. You, you have given them the pearl, the word. And they're not just trampling the word in, but they're trying to trample you in. You have to come away. Once you've given it, if, if they turn into... The swine, 
if they show themselves to be swine, you are not expected to be keep on throwing things, throwing the pearls of wisdom to them. We can pray for them for their later redemption. We can pray for them. But God did not expect any one of us to continue on bashing a door that will not open. We give the word. When it's received, we go in. When it's not received, we go to the next door. It is not a judgment on you or I if we have to turn and walk away from a door. We, we put that in God's hands. Once we have done the will of the Lord, which is to take forth his word, that's, that's us done that. Our other works is to love, love your neighbour. And who is your neighbour? Remember, yes, we love our enemies. That's a different love. That's a love where we pray for them. If they hurt, we help them. That's a different love. It's not a keep on going up and trying to give them a cuddle and they don't want it and they reject and reject. That's not the love God's talking about. It's the love of salvation to pray for them. If they've rejected, we can pray. If they fall down, we can help them up. But he says the sign of a Christian is to love one another and we are to love our neighbour. When Jesus was asked, who is my neighbour? What did he say? He told us the story of the Good Samaritan where someone was robbed and beaten and left naked on the road. I'm only visualising naked to a certain degree. <laughs> I'm praying that they didn't do the total. But they stripped this poor person of everything. And a man of faith comes by and he's, oh no, I don't, this could be something here, I don't want to be. Another man of faith comes by and, oh, don't want to be. They were his own people. And they didn't want to get involved. And a Samaritan, the enemy of the Jews, came by and he bundled the man up. He took him, he cared for him, he paid for his lodgings, he paid for his care. And he said, if there is any more to be done for this man, well, I have to go away for my business, but I will come back and I will fit any bills for that person. And then he said to them, who was the neighbour of that person? And it was the Samaritan. It was not the people who did not do the will of God. Your neighbour is your family, the family of God. These are the ones that we were commanded to love and fellowship with. We have no fellowship with the sinful he said, if they are sinful, if they continue in their sin, we are not to fellowship with them. We do not hold guilt for no longer fellowshipping with whether they are neighbours, next door neighbours, family members. If they have rejected us by rejecting the word of God, then we are in quite biblical rightness to walk away from that fellowship. It breaks our hearts, I know that. But there comes a time, <coughs> pardon me, I've had to do this myself. It has never stopped me loving. And it, I do not stop praying for I did go, I'm not perfect, please don't get me wrong thinking that, oh, gee, she's good. I did go through a great anger. I did go through a great anger. So I'm speaking from experience in this. 
the anger held back my faith. It made me ill. And it wasn't until God showed me how to release myself from the anger and I gave forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift given by God to you. It's very hard to forgive somebody else if you do not have strength in God. It's that God helps us. He gives us the gift of forgiveness. It's not just a gift to forgive us, but it's a gift to help us forgive others. It's a very beautiful thing. The night God gave me the gift of forgiveness for those other people that had done my family great wrong, it freed me. It is freedom indeed. And I am able through that grace that God gave me, I am able to forgive and still love and still pray for, but I know that the Bible tells me I am not to have fellowship with those that have rejected. And so I speak to you now. If people have rejected you, and rejected the word of God given in you. You are not held accountable by the Bible, by the Lord God, for stepping away and releasing yourself from fellowship with that. Because throughout the Bible it says to walk away, dust off your feet, do not fellowship, but Continue to love, continue to forgive and pray for. God sees the heartache. He sees you. He knows you. He is not angry with you. He is the one. You remember that anonymous um, poem with the footsteps in the sand and the person said, look, at my hardest time, you, you weren't there with me. No, that's not true, God said. When you only saw one set of footprints in the sand, that, my darling, was when I was carrying you. You may think he has forsaken you. You may think that he's angry at you because you're not doing this all righteous thing of keep on keeping on with these people that reject over and over. And he's saying, no, my darling, I'm not angry with you. I'm carrying you through this. My love for you is so great. I am trying to comfort you. I will not leave you alone. I will carry you through this time and you will know that I love you. I will comfort your heart. And when you see me, and you see my hands in your life, you will know I am with you. God loves you. He does not forsake you. Though the world forsake you, though your mother and father forsake you, he will not. And he does not judge you for ceasing fellowship with the ungodly. You are commanded to do so. Even if this hurts you, this is the right thing to do. So he will not judge you for it. He will not walk away from you for it. What is happening is the God of this world is angry at you. And he is trying to make you doubt. You are in righteous standing. And the very fact you feel attacked is because the God of this world doesn't want you to stop trying because he's trying to beat you down. 
He wants you involved in a little skirmish here. He wants to break your heart little by little by little until one day you say, it's not worth it. If I want to be in my family's life, I have to change. You cannot change. The only way you cannot change is if you step away and allow the grace of God to fall upon you and be a, a anointment for your soul. You need his healing. You need to realise he is there. He is all around you. The Lord is all around you, ministering to you, giving you encouragement. And you need to feel and let yourself talk only to him. And if you can't hear him, that's the noise in your head. That's not him not speaking. That's the noise in your head trying to drag you back to the conflict and not let you have peace. So you have to say, that's right, it's in the Bible. God said, remember every time Satan came up against Jesus to tempt him, Jesus answered with, is it not written? Well, now he's saying to you, is it not written? Satan is saying to you, oh, but didn't God say you have to love everybody? Aha, uh -huh. yes, you do, you do. But is it not written? You have to go back to the Bible and see what did God say about this circumstance? Is it not written? If they do not receive it, you dust off your feet and go on. Is it not written that you do not Stay in fellowship with those that have rejected the Lord. You are doing as is written. Once you can come back to the truth of what was written, he has to flee and you will feel God's presence around you again. Because you have fought with the word of God. Not relied on your own strength, not relied on your prayers, but you have relied on the word of God to rebuke the thoughts that Satan is putting in your mind. He wants you to doubt your salvation. You are coming, my darlings. If it's hard now, it's because you are being attacked. So go back. Your, your armour is... The word of God is part of your armour. You must have your armour with you. Don't drop it when these moments come. Don't doubt that the Lord is on your side. And he's not going to be angry with you when you're doing what the scripture tells you to do. So get that out of your mind. People are going to turn against you, darlings, you were told, the scripture tells you, they will turn against you. They will choose the easy side, what they think is the easy way. They will choose the world. And if you're coming between their peace with the world and your friendship, they will choose peace with the world over you. They make their decisions. All we can do is pray that when we're gone, they will have learnt from what you have already said and that the Holy Spirit will be able to convict them then. But you cannot blame yourself. We weren't meant to continue at one door forever and ever. We were meant to pass the word from door to door to door. We can't all do that. Some marvellous preachers that can go out into the street and preach. I, I watch them. Some I worry about. 
but others I watch with awe because they are truly blessed of God and are doing his work. They have a magnificent gift. We don't all have the same gift. For some of us, the gift of God and his purpose for us may be in a very small area. It may be for you to be the greatest daughter to a parent. It may be to be the greatest mother or grandmother or father or grandfather or the best uncle to raise up a child the way it should go. That is a purpose of God. That is a gift. Not only is the child the gift, but the ability for you to raise them up as they should go. That is a gift. And you are doing the works of your father when you do that. We were not all meant to be wonderful Chuck Mislers and um, he, he was a preacher, I think, of extreme intelligence. I didn't agree with every single thing he said. But I don't have to. <laughs> there are so many, you know, we see them and the gift they have. We don't understand it. But they had a gift that was for them, for their time. There are some that have the gift of research and they can give us knowledge and understanding through their research. Others are given the gift of, of discovery. Ron Wyatt was given the gift of dis, oh, beg your pardon, discovery of all of God's secrets. He discovered the ark, Noah's ark. He discovered or discovered, was led to expose Noah's ark. He was led to expose the Ark of the Covenant. He was led to expose Sodom and Gomorrah and the brimstone that fell from heaven. He, he was given that. He was led to expose when Moses crossed the sea and found the chariot wheels and the, the skulls and the things on the floor in the only possible place it could happen. Geologically, the only place possible. He was led to expose where the true Mount Sinai was. All of these things, that was his gift to show the world the truth. But you and I may be of quite humble purpose. There are people out there with Wonderful videos. I watch them. I get inspired and for, um, not fulfilled but encouraged knowing that they are finding all of these things out, putting the news of the world together. That is magnificent gift of God. And they have millions of viewers and that is tremendous. And then God made little me. And I don't get many views. That doesn't worry me. As long as I'm doing... I'm the one that got the... Oh, I hope I'm not the one that got the two um, talents and then buried them. No. But I've got a couple and I'm trying to, to spread them out. <laughs> I don't want to be the one that buried them. But you know what I mean. Everyone was given a different talent, a different quantity of talents. We do what we can do with what we've got. And for me, it was to encourage you. He said for me to prepare the bride. And if you're watching, then you are. The bride, he brings you to me. He encourages you. It is not me doing this. You see, I'm just a little old lady sitting in her house 
in a little village, not even a town. I'm in a little village in Australia. And yet he put me in front of a machine. I am terrified of telephones. I cannot talk to people on the telephone. Do you know that? I get so tongue-tied. I get so nervous. And when I first got onto this, I was terribly nervous. Now I just accept this is what God wanted me to do. And he wanted me to tell you some things. To remind you, that's all it is. You know all of this. But when the world gets so confusing and so much conflicting information and so many lies then maybe he just wants you to hear a calming voice a voice that brings you back to his word not complicated but simple the word of God is simple for a child unless we are as children. There, that's, the, that's the way he wants us to be. Innocent. Understanding truth through innocent eyes. And once you are washed in Jesus' blood, your eyes are innocent. All the sin has gone away, darlings. Don't continue blaming yourself for doing what actually is the right thing. You walk away from those that have rejected you. But do it with a heart. Yes, you will be saddened. But do it with a heart knowing that you have done it the way that God has told you. You cannot fellowship with those that have rejected God. So I pray that this has encouraged you. I pray this has eased some of your burdens. I know that you are going to go to glory with Jesus coming so, so soon. Fast. It's going to happen fast in the twinkling of an eye. Don't doubt that. Don't doubt that you stepping away from fellowship with sinners is going to stop you going there. No way, Jose. Oh, is that racially inappropriate? It's a saying I've said before. Um, there's no way that's going to happen. You are loved by him. And you are doing his will. And he will extract you from these places. But you will go through a time of grief. But make it a little time, darlings. Because remember, he's carrying you. He's lifted you up during that time of grief so that you will heal. Let him heal you and get rid of that voice of doubt. I'm going to leave it there, darlings. Dad's starting to, to wake up now. I just heard him. So this is always the time that I, I have to leave you. God loves you. Never doubt that. You are rapture ready. Don't doubt that. But stay ready and don't let doubts at this last minute pull you down. Jesus is going to pull you up. But don't get too heavy about it, okay? Don't make it difficult for yourself. Nothing is too difficult for him. Just don't get dragged down by yourself. Anyhow, God bless you. Have the most beautiful day. Those that of you that are in trouble and stress, know that I pray for you. Those that have asked for prayer, yes, I have, I have prayed. I have prayed and I continue in those prayers. Those of you that haven't asked for prayer, I still pray for you. I pray for your strength, for your courage, for your salvation and for your healing and for your loved ones. 
I pray for you and I pray and I hope you also pray for one another. And that's across the world, not just people on YouTubes and videos. Please pray for one another across the world. So many things are happening in places we don't even know about. But God knows, and he's coming soon. The rapture is on schedule. He has not delayed. He is coming. The two days are almost up. He stayed with the Gentiles for two days. The two days are almost up. So remember that. He's on his way. Keep ready. Don't doubt. And God bless you. And may his face shine upon you. And may he give you peace. I love you. God loves you. Amen. Goodbye, my darlings. I hope I see you very soon, very soon. Amen.